I, Tanya is a new film directed by Craig Gillespie and mainly starring Margot Robbie. And it is honestly one of the most interesting takes on a real life event that I've ever seen. How do I get a fair shot here? We also judge on presentation. Ah! We're gonna need it even the playing field. I know a guy who shouldn't even be saying his name. Derek. The press wanted me to be the pile of crap. I never did this. So I, Tanya is about the life of the Olympic skater Tanya Harding. Probably most known for uh, probably most known for having Nancy Kerrigan's uh, knee bashed in, and but this is more of a story about like her whole life, and they tackle the subject very interestingly because there are interviews with like all the people involved in the event, and they're like real interviews, and but they all kind of. None of them match up completely. They all tell slightly different stories. So throughout the movie, they may say, like, like the, the movie will show something that happened, and then one character will say, I, that, that never happened. And then, like, but the movie shows that. I think the movie kind of takes, you know, almost any the big argument between two people, they're like, they'll both exaggerate, and then the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. But I think the movie definitely took more of Tanya's side instead of Jeff Galuli. Because, I mean, they showed some of that stuff, but generally Tanya is portrayed as, you know, that she is kind of the victim of a lot of abuse from her mother, played crazily well by Allison Janney, and her husband uh, is played by Sebastian Stan. And, uh, you know, that basically from her child, her mother kind of abused her, and her dad left the mom, kind of left her there. And uh, like she kind of, when the boyfriend started beating her, and thought that that was normal. And, you know, they kind of, the, the cycle of abuse kind of continued. And all that was portrayed really well because, I mean, it showed that, like, different levels to it. But at times, like, you know, Tiny would be hitting them back after, but then she would still be the victim. And she was getting one, getting beat up. And there was a lot of, like, really uh, interesting scenes with that. And, I mean, it's a tough subject to tackle. And I think they did it pretty well. And I love that even, like, through, it's like, you know, that I think would be a pretty dark movie or maybe kind of depressing. But they put a lot of, like, humor in it. And it's really, it's kind of enthralling how how they mixed everything together. Because I think if you did something like this, it could so easily, like, fall flat in the face. Because, like, because sometimes there are, like, time jumps. Then they intersperse, like... Uh, almost like documentary clips of them talking about things that are happening and then played by the actors. And at the very end of the movie, they show some of the real clips. But um, there's so many things that could go wrong, but it does it so perfectly that it just, I was enthralled by the movie. Now, the one thing I didn't love, and that's really the only thing I didn't like in the movie, kind of, is that the CGI can at times be very bad. And I mean, honestly... There, if you have um, a person, you do an Olympic skater, and that she was the first American woman to do like do the triple, whatever. I forget, I'm not that follow skate, but there's this jump that that uh, really really difficult to do. So I mean, you can't teach Margot Robbie to do that, and um, especially when I mean, she's too old for it. And that's the other thing I didn't like is that Margot Robbie, she's Margot Robbie, you know, she. But, you know, in the beginning, they, they have, you know, a little kid for, like, four or five. Then they have a girl that does really well in the sh short part from, like, 12. And then you, at 15, you have Margot Robbie. And, I mean, even if you put some fake braces on her, she still looks like Margot Robbie. So, I mean, they didn't really try anything to make her look too much younger. But, I mean, it, it worked. You know, fine. It's a movie. You, know, you can accept that. But even, like, like for most of the movie, like, she's... Because it's Margot Rob Robbie, I kept thinking that she's older, you know? But then, like, we say, I'm only 25. And I'm like, oh, yeah, she, yeah, she is older. Like, I'm, they almost, I was like, you know, Margot Robbie's in her 30s, you know? And she looks like she's in her 30s. I mean, she's beautiful. But uh, she doesn't look young. But, you know, when she's skating, through some of the small things, you know, you can tell that, yeah, that's Margot Robbie. But then through any of the difficult stuff, they you can tell that they have, you know, a body double. And you know, that stuff looks good. Whether you can't really, she's spinning, so you can't really see her face. 
The problem comes when they do the face replacement. And I mean, they did things like this in the Black Swan. You know, they replaced her, her face, but like she didn't actually do all that, the ballerina stuff in Black Swan. But the same thing they did with this, but I don't know if they didn't have the same budget or the same skill or the same amount of time they needed. Because it looked like, I don't know if you've ever seen some of those, uh, those, those gifs or gifs with uh, Trump. Like when they, like last year after he won the election, they had that commercial, a Christmas commercial, and then the person swapped the faces of Trump on like the dog. And, you know, it, it looks like that. It looks like an amateur did a face swap on the gif. Because, uh, I mean, it, it it was noticeably bad. Like, it took me out of the movie a little bit. When you see her face kind of plastered on, like, ah. And it's like, you oh, know, that is so fake. It doesn't, it doesn't look right at all. And I mean, I don't know if it's like a previs. But, it's like, but I mean, and during the slow-mos, it looks pretty good. Like, during the slow-mo stuff, it must have spent a little more time. Or they did different shots. The slow mo looks good, but any other time when they're doing something fast, but they still want to have her show her face and show that's Margot Robbie, uh, it's pretty bad. But still, I mean, the skating worked. And I mean, it, it was fine once he got uh, tried to uh, ignore that the face swapping. And I liked. I mean, they did a lot of skating, and it'd be easy to not do any skating and just like have the drama off off the ice. So I like that they tried it. It just they needed a little more effort. But, I mean, it's a great movie when it's, everything's going on and you see them, you know, time is passing and, and more stuff goes on and then you finally get to the big event and that is where the movie just goes crazy. Like, honestly, if it wasn't real, like, I think a movie would have trouble, like, trying to portray it because, I mean, like, you know, this stuff actually happened and it just, how they did it, it was funny while it was being horrible and it was filmed really well. And, I mean, the Derek guy is insane. And I think the, one of the funniest uh, characters in the movie is the uh, uh, Paul uh, Walter Hauser playing uh, Sean Eckhart. And he's, like, was her bodyguard and the friend of uh, Jeff Galuli. And the, the actor playing him was hilarious. Like, he was... Really funny. Like he was like trying to pretending to be like a you know, the secret agent and an expert in and stuff. So he has like he gets people they do like the idea is that they're going to just um send a death threat to Nancy Kerrigan. But then this guy kind of like it tells the other people to do something more to take her out and it's just it's ridiculous, but also really funny. And I loved how the movie dealt with this. Because, like, you know, everyone knows everyone's waiting for the big event to happen. And then when they get to it in the storyline, they will, and, and they all, like, the interviews kind of stop, and they all get an interview for, for, for each person, like, and then that happened, you know? And they're, like... And then they actually show stuff, like, how leading up to it. And then what the after effects of what happened. And I think that some of my favorite parts of the movie is just... Because, like, each person said something different kind of happened. And the, the movie kind of shows that, well, this could be what happened. But even if it is, that it looks really bad with Jeff Galuli with what he did. And with, like, paying for this other guy to send letters. But then, it, you know, the other time, like, if, if anyone actually knew, if Tanya actually knew... But I like how to do like in the film is like Tanya is just like oh whatever like we're saying like oh the letters aren't gonna work like we can't send them and like oh whatever it's fine like you tell like she, in the movie portrays like she really didn't have any interest in it she was just focused on the skating and the the film tries to portray it like yeah it was all you know uh, Jeff Galuli and his uh, crazy friend and you know it's an interesting way to do it because I think obviously you know from the actual case if you remember like I. I was young, but I still kind of remember it, a little bit of it. And, you know, she wasn't really, like, I think there's a conspiracy, but she wasn't, you know, never really arrested for the actual act. And uh, so the film goes around that, and it it's done really well how they portray it. 
At the same time, though, like another movie may have had almost all the movie in this spot. And while it, this is a big part of the movie, I love that they didn't just focus on that. They focused, you know, on the rest of her life too, and so that you really were kind of rooting for her and, and really liked her when you got to that moment. And you know, it was a great way to make the film. And uh, like when they got to, you know, the big event, the Olympics, and the stuff that happened after. It was actually got kind of emotional. Like I got emotional with it. I was really invested in the movie, and uh, you know they did. They didn't do much after like everything happened. Like they did a lo- The end movie ended like in like a boxing match. But you know, other than that, you know they didn't do too much of her life now. And it kind of makes me interested. You know what she's going on now. I think she's pretty much out of the limelight now. I think she like had a kid or I don't know, married had a kid. But, you know, it, it's, and it's really good. Like, I really think that, you know, uh, she should be nominated for an Oscar. And I think, I mean, Sebastian Stan and Allison Janney should be up for supporting actor probably as well. And I mean, I, I liked the one guy, Paul Water, but like, I don't know if he did an Oscar, but he did a great job. And, you know, it's honestly one of my favorite films of the year. Like, I loved it. Like, it's, it's so interesting way of doing it. I mean, the acting is amazing throughout it, and it's filmed really well. And I love the, the way they edit it together. Like, definitely, I think maybe she would nominate it for the best editor. Because it was really good. So I'd probably give it, like, a 9.5 or, like, a 9.75 out of 10. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, if you can find it, you know, check it out. But I, I love the film, and it's... I hope it, you know, does well when the award season comes around. But uh, thanks for watching. Check out other replays around my head or subscribe to me over here. Thanks.